We are in South Williamsport where tonight the team from Bend, Oregon will take on the team from Goodlettsville, Tennessee. They all make up Little League Baseball. And as we take a look at the division at a glance, we have 16 teams, eight on the United States side, eight on the international side. The boys and the girls are ages 10 to 13. The games last six innings unless, of course, they are tied. The outfield fences are 225 feet away from home plate. And there is a mandatory minimum play rule for everybody to get in. Earlier today, Panama scored 10. They beat Mexico 10 to 2. Esmith Pineda went deep. He had a three-run home run. In the first game at Lomity Stadium, Ryan Harlos was outstanding on the mound for the team from upstate New York, Maine, and well, he also himself hit a home run, and they looked very, very strong. Meantime, next door, the game's still going on. Clayton Campbell, there's been an error in the game. So it's not a perfect game, but he has yet to allow a hit. What a statement Australia can make by throwing a no-hitter and beating Italy in their opener of this 2016 Little League World Series. The games today, the winners will play Sunday. The teams that lose will end up playing Saturday. And Friday, we have eight more teams in action. We're looking forward to seeing Bend, Oregon, and Goodlettsville, Tennessee, a familiar name to those that follow Little League World Series action. They were here in 2012 and distinguished themselves quite well as they took the United States Championship that year. But alongside Jessica Mendoza and John Kruk, I'm Carl Ravitch. All right, everything's a little different. Everything's a little smaller here, but the booth feels the same. Now you get to talk about Little Leaguers. This is your first time here? First time. First time in Williamsport. First time doing Little League. What do you I'm, think? I'm giddy right now. Are you, you kidding are? me? I, I got here at 11 a.m. It's just been hanging out with the kids. It's been awesome. Yeah, everybody that comes here says the same thing. As far as the action on the field, it's going to be interesting. You look down to see Tennessee, and you see two kids that look a lot alike. They actually have twins on the team. Well, yeah, twins do yeah, look alike do. most of the time. And, and Tyler and, and Tanner. Tanner's catching. Tyler Tyler's playing first base. They bat 1-2 in the lineup, Carl, and they have been table setters in the regional in four games combined. They scored 11 runs. If Oregon's going to win, they got to keep those two off the bases. Let's go down to Jamie, to the dad of the two. Yeah. Carl, not only do you have the twins on the team, you've got their dad, who is one of the assistant coaches, Jeremy Jones. And four years ago, they were here as a family, as baseball fans. They were sitting up on the hill cheering on this Goodlettsville team as they made their championship run. And I asked him what it's like to be back now as a coach and as a dad. And he said it is a dream come true. He knew that the team was good enough, just didn't know that they could actually get here. I also asked him uh, just how competitive the twin boys are. And he said everything is a race. Even putting toothpaste on a toothbrush <laughs> becomes a competition. So definitely look for those guys to, to try and one-up each other here in Williamsport. They both had huge regionals. They accounted for 10 hits and 23 at bat. So we look forward to seeing the Jones twins on the field. Again, we've heard about this Goodlettsville team. We've seen them before. Oregon we've seen, but not from that area. And you know all about Bend, Oregon, right? Yeah, my sister lives there, my brother-in-law. We've got a place there. I spent a lot of time. But think about this, the pride that this team has. The only time the state of Oregon has been represented by a team outside of the Portland area. So they're from Bend, which is in central Oregon, talking to the players and coaches before the game. That fearlessness, okay? Yeah. That pride I just mentioned. But, Carl, you got to think, too, a lot of nerves because they have never been here and a team from that area has not been here. All right, so how do they calm those nerves before we go to break? Well, they're not going to be able to calm them. they got to get to first pitch, <laughs> get the game underway, play a little baseball. Enjoy it. Embrace it. <laughs> it's fun. It's baseball. This is the icing on the cake. You're in Williamsport at the Little League World Series, and we'll have the first pitch coming up when we come back. World Series is presented by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes Cereal. They are great! And in part by the Odyssey. From Honda, official vehicle of Little League. And Progressive, comparing rates to help you save. Now that's Progressive. Team from the Southeast, Goodlettsville, Tennessee, has taken the field, which means we'll get a chance to see the boys from Bend, Oregon, bat first. Six-time overall, a team from Oregon 
has made it to the Little League World Series. We take a look at today's lineup as you first look at the map. And when you go from the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic way on the right side of the country, we're way on the left where the Northwest region has teams from Alaska, Idaho, Montana, Oregon, Washington, and Wyoming. Here are the boys presented by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Hi, my name is Blaine Causey and my favorite baseball player is Jacoby Ellsbury. Hi, my name is Declan Corrigan and my favorite baseball player is Mike Trout. Hi, my name is Braden Enelcoffer and my favorite baseball player is Mike Trout. Hi, my name is Bugsy Jensen and my favorite baseball player is Clayton Kershaw. Hi, my name is Julian Mora and my favorite baseball player is Carlos Correa. Hi, my name is Bowen Nelson and my favorite baseball player is Miguel Cabrera. Hi, my name is Aaron Plattner and my favorite baseball player is Robinson Cano. My name is Sam Renner and my favorite player is Giancarlo Stanton. Hi, my name is Zach Reynolds and my favorite baseball player is Robinson Cano. Hi, my name is Joe Schutz and my favorite baseball player is Buster Posey. My name is Chase Terry and my favorite baseball player is Dustin Pedroia. My name is Evan Ullman and my favorite player is Jackie Robinson. Way to go, Evan. We appreciate that. A little historical tip of the cap to Jackie Robinson. Steve Mora is the manager of this team. He is the son of Jim Mora, the former NFL head coach and the brother of I know, Jim Mora so Jr., nice. who, of course, is the head football coach at UCLA. How you doing, Five? You doing all right? You doing okay? He's talking to Isaiah Page, the third baseman from Tennessee. And one thing you'll hear from Steve is incredible enthusiasm, positive reinforcement. Everybody that talks about him says he doesn't ever want to talk about himself, that this is really about the kids, and his interest is truly in coaching and molding boys into men versus any type of individual glory from coaching. His son, Julian Mora, the shortstop, will lead things off, and we are set to get underway. Tough pitcher on the mound tonight, Zach McWilliams, the big kid from Goodlettsville, Tennessee. Look out, that one got him, and just like that, Mora gets hit, and it led to first base. So a little nerves from Zach McWilliams and Mora. If your favorite movie is Rocky, you got to be able to take one of those, and down to first he goes. You saw Tanner Jones sit right up underneath Mora's hands, trying to get that first pitch fastball in, and McWilliams just let it go. See his numbers, eight and two-thirds at the regionals, 1-0, and oh, and an 18 to eight strikeout to walk ratio. Here's Isaiah Bugsy Jensen. Played on a fastball that clocks in at 71 miles an hour, the major league equivalent of 92 miles an hour. Mound here 46 feet away from home plate and the base paths 60 feet. That ball is fouled off on the attempted bunt. Bugsy's got a little Hunter Pence action going on. Rolling up the pants. Yeah, he and Mora both. <laughs> Julian Mora. I was surprised when none of them said Hunter Pence was their favorite player. Maybe they just like the way Hunter wears his pants. I think there's a whole idea that it helps with your strike zone, but I don't know. Let's see how accurate it is. So we have high, dark colored socks that somehow helps with the strike zone? Apparently. That's really? The whole idea is that you won't get called a lower strike because really? you think that your strike zone is where the pant leg is. I'm not sure the umpire can look at the pants, <laughs> look at the ball going at 92 miles or equivalent at 92 and say, oh, or it just his looks pants really are cool. higher. Oh, yeah. His pants are higher. That's a ball. Fashion statement. <laughs> Hanging in there is Bugsy, the center fielder. He had three hits in their regional. They lost the opener of their regional, which put him in a pickle. And then they came back and won four games in a row to advance to Williamsport. Their last three games they won by a combined score of 32 to 1. First strikeout of the day for Zach McWilliams. Talked about the pitch speed equivalent being 46 feet away. You see some of these kids throw it 77 miles an hour. That would that would be like facing an Aroldis Chapman fastball. Here's Bowen Nelson, the right fielder, had a huge regional, had seven hits and 15 at bats. This is a grounder to third, Page to second to first. Not in time, but a good turn by Page and Easton Dillard at second to knock off the lead runner. 
Page does a good job of coming across the field, throwing off his front foot. How about Easton Dillard getting rid of the ball very quickly? And you got to think 60 feet, how quick they get down that first baseline. Nice effort. Looks like Zach McWilliams is breathing a little bit after that first ball that hit Julian Mora. <laughs> he has thrown six straight strikes. Yeah, Carl, in Little League, that could be the most effective pitch he throws. Hit the first guy. Doesn't seem like the other guys for Oregon seem to be digging in too hard, do they? No, a hit batter and seven consecutive strikes leads to three outs. And that means Goodlitzville, Tennessee, is coming up. As John Crock, Jess Mendoza, and me, Carl Ravage, hold on a second. We may have a foul ball called. Third base umpire. He came in and said we got a foul ball that hit off Reynolds' foot. So hold the commercial break. Now that's the one thing, too, you'll notice is different from Little League and Big League. Big leaguers will lay there and roll around, grab their foot, Soccer pop style. back to the dugout, call eight trainers out, and Little Leaguers run to first. I don't know if they got it. That's a back leg, not the front leg, it looked like. It didn't come dirt. close to him. No. Wow. Well, it's an early break, if you will, for Goodlitzville, Tennessee. Third base umpire thought he saw something. This one oh, oh, played wow. by McWilliams. Wow, the pitcher saves himself. That was destined for center field. A web gem for Zach. Talk about reflexes. Talk about flexibility. Woohoo! Come on, analysts. Give me something. <laughs> Are you still, kidding? We're still in awe. Are you kidding? What a play by Zach. Underway with our second game in the United States bracket. And we're going to get a chance to see the team from the southeast, Goodlitzville, Tennessee, come to bat for the first time. They were an offensive juggernaut back in 2012 when they went all the way to the United States Championship game and won it. Tough region to come out of. They play those games, the regional championships in Warner Robins, Georgia, a team we've seen a lot, but a lot of states represented in the southeast. Time now to meet the kids. It's brought to us by Frosted Flakes. My name is Robert Carroll. My favorite player is Dustin Pajoya. Hi, my name is Easton Dillard. My favorite player is Derek Jeter. Hi, my name is Brock Duffer. My favorite baseball player is Craig Kimbrell. Hi, my name is Easton Jackson, and my favorite baseball player is Bryce Harper. Hi, my name is Tanner Jones, and my favorite baseball player is Mike Trout. Hi, my name is Tyler Jones, and my favorite baseball player is Mookie Betts. Hi, my name is John Henry Knotts, and my favorite baseball player is David Price. Hi, my name is Zach McWilliams. My favorite player is David Ortiz. Hi, my name is RJ Moore. My favorite baseball player is Milky Bits. Hi, my name is Ryan Odin, and my favorite baseball player is Giancarlo Stanton. Hi, my name is Isaiah Page, and my favorite baseball player is Domingo Ayala. Hi, my name is Carson Rucker, and my favorite baseball player is Derek Jeter. Hi, my name is John Luke Simmons, and my favorite player is Randy Johnson. <laughs> wow, we could have gone but not forgotten. Some throwbacks. To Remember in the regional one kid, like said, Babe Ruth was yep. his favorite player. Jeter. Know your history. We've heard Jackie Robinson tonight. Nice stuff. Joey Hale was the manager of the team that was here in 2012 and compares this team very favorably to that one. Uh, as far as being a complete team, and again, that team could really score some runs. Maybe hard tonight. Zach Reynolds, really good pitcher. He threw five and a third scoreless innings in their regional final. So the big righty who wears number nine is going to be on the mound for Bend, Oregon. Turned out to be a good top half of the first. It was an odd uh, call there on the foul ball that wasn't, but it didn't result in any damage or really any added pitch totals to the pitch count, only one. I think Williams got to flash the glove a little bit. Yes. Smoked salmon and elk for Zach Reynolds. Food of a power pitcher. I've had smoked salmon before. I've not enjoyed elk. That tells you what part of the country he's from, too. Yeah, Northwest. oh, without question. <laughs> Elk's pretty good. That one is a good one on the corner of Tanner Jones, one of the two twins. He's your catcher. He had a couple of home runs in that regional in Warner Robins, Georgia. And his brother Tyler waiting to get a bat in his hand. He actually has it in his hand, waiting to get... 
into the batter's box. Pretty good rip there from Tanner. Left hand hitting catcher. Not too, uh, it's kind of a rare thing. Phillies like the 93 a, team had a. <laughs> and a leadoff hitter at that. Pretty good one. Yes, we did. Brian McCann, a left hand hitting catcher. Yeah. AJ Pruszynski. All right, maybe there's more than I Boy, thought. Boy, there's a lot of them. Three <laughs> <laughs> out of 60 guys in the big leagues. Mm, good pitch in the dirt. And a nice job by the team from Oregon. Tanner Jones retired. Love what the catcher did yep. right here. Carl, once the ball got away from him, he knew he had time. He steps out, clears the runner, and gives his first, you know, gives the first baseman a clear path to see the throw come. And watch him. Watch how this ball goes in the dirt. He blocks it perfectly. And then he picks it up and gets a good angle to throw to first base where he's not throwing over or around the runner. Now Tyler Jones first pitches away. And the other part of that, your first baseman down there, Aaron Flattner, knows to go into foul territory basically to get away from the runner. It's not for lack of practice. These teams, all of them, since about the middle of June every day. That one is hit hard, smothered over there by Platner. And two good defensive plays by the team from Oregon. Aaron Platner does a, a good job reading the ball, going, not afraid to go down to the knee, come up quick, knowing the speed of Jones coming down the line. So not only being able to leave his feet, get to the ball, finish the play. Inside, that's a huge glove he's got over there. Big boy, first baseman. We that? gotta save all those infielders. Look at that. The like the size of jump the they throw over there. <laughs> That's a huge glove. Zach McWilliams learning early. Goodlitzville will swing early. What a night for a baseball game here in South Williamsport, Pennsylvania. It's cooled off humidity earlier, but just a beautiful, spectacular setting. As we begin the Little League World Series. Earlier today, a phenomenal start for that team, the team from uh, Maine and well, New York, the Mid-Atlantic champions. They beat Rhode Island 7-2. to two. Their starting pitcher, Ryan Harlos, was outstanding on the mound, also hit a three-run home run. So a real good start. Oh! And getting off to a good start, really important, guys, in Little League World Series. Since they went to a 16-team format in 01, no team has ever went on to win the championship after losing game one. See the boys from Canada tomorrow night. Wow, oh, they all called that before home plate umpire. Nine bodies started to move towards the dugout, and then we got the strikeout call. They have a good pitcher's duel tonight between Zach Reynolds and Zach McWilliams. The only thing that says small town America more than Main Street and apple pie is a parade like this one. The annual Grand Slam Parade that welcomes the world to Williamsport and the Little League World Series. Forty thousand locals turned out to watch and join those Little League teams and their friends and families last night with a parade down Main Street. Our fresh take from Williamsport brought to you by Subway. Panama, a winner 10-2. And Endwell, New York, who we just saw watching tonight's game, gets a double, triple, and a homer from Ryan Harlost. Australia, they end up beating Italy 3-1. Clayton Campbell went five innings. He didn't give up a hit, but Italy obviously did. Uh, not so obvious. I mean, you could have got some walks in there, but they did get a hit. It was not a no-hitter. They scored a run. And Australia ended up winning 3-1. I think one of the coolest things too, Carl, walking around, being here from earlier in the morning all day today is how the teams are here all day, all night. They don't go really back to the hotel. They might grab some food, but they are all about the entire experience. They don't yeah. want to leave. No, they don't. And given the attention they all receive, it's it's hard to want to not be sitting out there and having people come up and talk with you and learn about your culture and your city and your team, sign autographs. Oh! All part of a unique experience. 
Just to be just to be told by people you don't know, congratulations, right. great yeah. job. That means a lot to not only kids, but you know, to us that played at a different at a higher level. Wayne Causey bats now, and he oh. fouls one off at the plate. You've had such phenomenal success, Jess, with the Olympics and uh, what you've been able to do professionally. But does it give you some idea of how hard it is and you have a little boy who's going to start the league to, to actually get a team here? You know how hard that is? You've got tens of thousands of players and thousands of teams, and there's only eight left in the country. That's what, when I first got here, I wanted to see exactly the process because my son played small town, Moore Park, Little League, and to think about just even... That small town goes on, gets an all-star team, plays a few other teams, represents in a regional, the process, and then they come and represent possibly not even your state. Your state might not even make it to the Little League World Series. Mm. How good these kids are and how they've had to kind of learn to play together, learn you know, how to come back from a loss like Bend, Oregon did, right. losing their first regional game. McWilliams, two and two to Blaine Causey, who fouls one off the screen. Just to sort of illustrate how difficult it is, you go through the districts. This is what you can get used to. You go to districts, then you go to a sectional tournament, and then a state or national tournament, and then you go to, as you said, your state may not even get there. You go through the regional tournament, end up here in Williamsport. It is an awfully, awfully difficult road. And again, you really want to congratulate all the teams that aren't here, who fell just short, another hit batter. Wayne Causey gets one off the elbow. You know, one thing I've noticed with Zach McWilliams is he's not afraid to go inside, and obviously he's hit two batters as well. But one of the hardest things I feel like, well, even at the major league level, Crucky, is if you take a look at McWilliams, just a fastball getting away from him. Well, he, he took that pretty well to take it off the elbow. Had a little jog with Al Ullman, the first base coach. We usually see pitchers really try to chip away, 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 away. And it's hard to get inside and be able to find that, to not get hitters to lean or, or their barrels to be able to get, get out and connect. You saw Caleb Carpenter, a special pinch runner, go in and replace Kazi at first. Kazi will stay in the game at third base. He'll just get a little rest and maybe address that elbow that got hit. Maybe a little ice pack. Yeah. Declan Corrigan, the left fielder. Last inning when, when Moore got hit to lead off the game. They tried to bunt him to second base and was un, in a, unaffected or, at doing that job. They let, they let Declan Corrigan swing the bat, it looks like. Inside corner called strike. Second straight Little League World Series appearance for a team from Oregon. Six-time overall, Wilshire Riverside Little League last year came here and went 0 for 3. He tried it, it and he said it's a strike. It's exactly what they did in the first inning with Isaiah Bugsy Jensen. Until you get a strike, you're you know you're bunting after you get one strike. Tough pitcher puts you in a big hole with two strikes as this one is delivered to Corrigan and it's just out of the glove. And no foul. I thought maybe a foul ball, but no, that's a strikeout on Corrigan in the second for McWilliams. There we go. What, what shock, is that? Shock, shock. Okay. Whoa, what is what? that? Yeah, I, like I'm trying to figure out. Hello, fried Cin dough. Fried dough. <laughs> Just fried dough? Yeah, with oh, cinnamon, cinnamon sugar on there. there. Yeah. Where are you from? How do we get <laughs> I don't know you anymore. <laughs> so eating, disappointing. Eating elk and... Smoked salmon. Yeah. Elk. Fried dough. Does that help? Whoa. Oh. We call those funnel cakes where I'm from. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I would have agreed with that, but I, we call it fried dough up in the Northeast. <laughs> a fried dough. dough. Nope. See? Nope. There you go. <laughs> so I don't sleep for, for 18 more hours. Who cares? It's sugar. Funnel cakes. And there you go. Thank you, Doug Holmes. He's got my back. The great debate. <laughs> This brings me back to another conversation we had about food when it was the sprinkles or jimmies on top of ice cream. Yeah. Sprinkles. Right. And in the Northeast, they're jimmies. 
way outside. That's going to be a strike three. First base. Runner heads all the way down. But he was, was occupied, so he's coming back. So he's out. The runner can move up on a pass ball, and he does so. Third strikeout of the game. We'll call that a wild pitch. And down to second goes the special pinch runner, Carpenter. Aaron Plattner's got a chance. See if we can get a run on the board for Oregon. Had a good regional. Had three hits. Oh! Of course, Little League, you can't leave the bag as a base runner until it crosses home plate. But when it does, Carpenter gets a pretty significant jump, hoping for a ball past the catcher. impressed with McWilliams his command his demeanor I mean he looks like a a pitcher he really <laughs> looks like a pitcher <laughs> he's got the little hop after the pitch one I mean two, gentlemen, one I love it His 20-year-old brother is a starting pitcher with the Kane County Cougars, the Arizona Diamondbacks farm system yeah. in the Midwest League. You could tell. Here's some mechanics that are working. Yeah. It's just the whole thing. Look at the glove. Looking over the glove. I mean, it's just beautiful to watch. Great pitch there. Looks like a slider, and he picks up his third strikeout of the inning. Fourth of the game. Zach and Zach, both pitchers pitching well. And that is really what's going on. Williamsport with a rainbow. Very appropriate. Welcome back, everyone. Every boy and girl, favorite Major League Baseball players. We sat down and heard what the big leaguers have to say when they hear that they are the favorite player of somebody in Little League. I watch the Little League World Series a lot. You know, even even the kids from Tennessee, it's, I'm still not their guy. I'm waiting for that kid, and when, oh, when I get him, I mean, he's he's gonna get some stuff. Now I'm sure a ton of kids are gonna say David Price my favorite player, and I'm just gonna have to send all my gear out. But that first kid that says it, you know, he's he's gonna get a nice little care package like, for sure. There have been a few who have said David Price is their favorite player. And as a result, they're probably sitting there waiting for some David Price swag. swag. John Henry Knotts. All right, what do we got? David Price. He has identified you as their favorite athlete. Price, of course, now a member of the Boston Red Sox. But before that, he played college ball at Vanderbilt University, not far at all from Goodlettsville. And with more on that, we go down to Jamie. Yeah, and I'm here with his uh, former coach at Vandy, Tim Corbin. And you have some World Series experience yourself, your team winning it all at Omaha a couple years ago. Uh, but this is your third time here at the Little League World Series. What's this experience like for you to come here as a fan? Well, it's a little bit different, but in a lot of ways, it's got an Omaha-type feeling to it. I mean, I think because of the age of the kids, it's pure. It's really... It's really raw just to see the emotions of the kids and how they play and how they interact with one another. And we've been fortunate in the state of Tennessee to have teams from Greater Nashville participate. So uh, it's been a lot of fun watching these kids. Why is it important to you to, to come out and support these guys? It's because you start knowing the families. I mean, some of these kids' uh, brothers played on the last Good Litchville team back in 2012. And now it, it, it seems like Maggie and I just are connected with youth baseball in a way that kind of draws you to them and uh, it's you know it's the feeder system and maybe someday these kids will come to Vanderbilt that's not the impetus why we're here but we still like following the kids I, I gotta ask you too uh, one of the guys that helped you win your World Series title Dansby Swanson made his debut last night for the Braves uh, did you have a chance to watch that at all and what did you think oh yeah I got to watch it pretty good I, I thought he well it wasn't a surprise to me that he handled himself so well Hit the first ball hard, then he got a base hit after that, and he, he picked up two hits. But I, I, th I thought once he gets up there, he, he's going to stay. He's going to make his mark. He's a very good player, and he's 
He's filled with uh, confidence, and it's contained. It's, it's kind of right where you want it, but uh, I'm just glad he's there. It's a good spot for him right now. All right, well, enjoy the rest of your time here in Williamsport, and thanks so much. Thanks, Jamie. It's great. Tim Corbin, who has really turned the Vanderbilt program into a power in college baseball. I wonder what Tim thinks about the talent level here. I mean, given that Vanderbilt is one of the premier college programs in the country, what he thinks about this talent level. What, what's your impression of the talent level in just the short time, Jess, you've seen it? I think just their knowledge of the game, and we can talk about, you know, the physical skill sets at a younger age. Third baseman is playing Kazi. Nice play. Remember, he was the one that got hit by a pitch, so his elbow's okay. Well, Carl, he got hit in the left elbow, so unless he can't reach for the ball, he's in trouble, but the throw, look at this play, though. Look, nice. Catch it on the big hop. Take your little step, make your throw to first. Good throw, low throw, so the first baseman can stretch. The fundamentals, Jess, they're, they're, yep. they're at a premium here. And that's something, even at the major league level, that I've been shocked with, and Tim Kirchin talks about it all the time, is, is you know, the, the lack of knowledge of even when to take third base on a, on a base hit when you're at first. And, you know, just the knowledge of the game that's gone away. And I, what I've been impressed with talking to these kids, it's not just the coaches. The players understand, and I think that's where Little League and the coaches here have done a good job of not just telling them, but having them know what they're doing. Ethan Jackson is the left fielder. Oh. Took something off that one, and he misses and evens the count up one and one. Ethan had a pretty good regional. Five for ten, two homers. A 600 batting average. Yeah, I'll take Not bad. That. <laughs> two homers in that regional championship game, too. Oh, and he loves the Sandlot. That's a classic. Generational classic. One of the great, well, it does appeal to a lot of different people. You're right. We had uh, Jamie talk about how the Rhode Island team and the team from New York took the bus from Bristol and the coaches couldn't quite appreciate the music selections that they were playing in the back of the That's bus. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> couldn't quite appreciate <laughs> I think they termed it bad music. Yeah. Trying to say they hated it. <laughs> what we're trying to get across here, these people. Team that's won it three of the last four years, Japan. They Always got, fun to watch. They got to be excited. Baseball is returning, softball and baseball, yeah. to Tokyo in 2020. That was just announced a week and a half ago, in Tokyo, Japan. 66, 131 miles away from Williamsport, Pennsylvania. And I'm available to coach, just in case anyone needs me. What's what, that? What sport are you going to coach? Available to coach. In case someone needs me, softball, softball. Come on. Ripped up the middle, that's going to be a hit. Ethan Jackson continues to square the ball up from the regionals, and he brought it with him to Williamsport. Hard hit ball right back up the middle. First hit of the game for either team. Yeah, it was getting kind of a little boring watching the pitchers dominate. Now we need some hitters to start, start going off right here. Ethan Jackson, oh, what a, you know, he had a great regional. He's just now continuing it here. In the World Series, you, you know, the biggest thing when you're in a like a postseason of this magnitude, every series is different. So, the, you know, the sectionals and the you know, whatever to the regionals and now to here. But it's nice to get your first hit back, get your first hit out of the way. And now it's, you know, let's play ball. R.J. Moore has gone on as a special pinch runner. As Ethan Jackson will sit. Robert Carroll bats as we're just underway. Bottom second of this opening round game in the United States bracket between Oregon and Tennessee, representing the Northwest and Southeast regions. Slow roller, it's going to be a foul ball and just foul. That's a good thing for Oregon because that would have been an infield hit. Gonna be my hitting coach, Japan. Yeah, yeah. coach your outfield hitters. You're gonna have to. <laughs> well, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Sit there and delegate. <laughs> Carl, you got the infield. <laughs> uh, I'll be here. You guys go over there. I'll handle the Williamsport stuff. You've got Tokyo covered. 
It is good to have it back, though, isn't it? One and two, gentlemen. Oh, absolutely. I mean, for both sports. This one to center field. Jensen takes a few steps back, and retreating to first is Moore. And Little League wants to thank the dedicated volunteers who make the program a special experience for the millions of children. Little League extends its appreciation to its official sponsors, like American Honda and Russell Athletics. They help maintain the strength and leadership of the Little League program. You saw a shot of the parents and the coaches, the volunteer umpires. It takes way more than a village. In fact, it takes a world to keep the Little League programs going and going so strongly. Now Ryan Oden bats. That's a called strike. A couple of hard hit balls, though. Jackson with a single back up the middle, and Carroll's ball to center field was hit pretty well. Well, that's the biggest thing you notice in the first inning. And Carl, anytime you got nerves flowing, which you can't. Every kid here is going to have a little bit of nerves. Your heart's pounding. And the biggest thing it affects is just being able to see the ball. And you always talk about here, about here, hitters slowing the ball down. That's what you're starting to see these Tennessee hitters do. Just you're starting to see it better. Heart rate maybe go down a little bit. Looking for his third strikeout. Reynolds will get it. If your name is Zach and you're on the mound in Williamsport tonight, you're pitching a heck of a game, whether it's Reynolds or McWilliams. This coverage of the Little League World Series is presented by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes with John Cruck, Jess Mendoza, and Jamie Sire. I'm Carl Ravage. Just a gorgeous night here in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Couldn't ask for better. Look Beautiful blue sky giving way to nightfall. Game's already in the books. Panama, a winner early over Mexico, 10-2. And, well, New York starts the Little League World Series off with a 7-2 win over Warwick, Rhode Island. Winners will play Sunday against the winners. So we have Panama and Australia meeting. And, well, New York will wait the winner of Oregon in Goodlettsville, Tennessee, with all those other games coming up on ESPN on Friday, presented by Kellogg's. Are you kidding? So three straight innings. The leadoff hitter has been hit by pitches. In the last inning, he struck out the side after that. Yeah, but here's the thing. This is the ninth hitter that he hit. Now leading off. Now you got a runner on first. No outs. Top of your order up. The Oregon's going to get on top early. That might be this inning. Got the elbow guard on the left elbow and it hit him on the right forearm. Special pitch runner Joe Schultz has gone in. He's in fact a straight substitute according to the official scorer. So Joe Schultz will take over and catch for Braden Edelkoffer. Top of the order Julian Mora. Illegal pitch. Ball on the batter. Illegal pitch. That's on pitch count. I heard the umpire. It looked like Zach McWilliams had started his delivery and stopped it, so that's now ball one. Ball! See, they get the wheel play going, too, with Mora up, potential bunter. Well, Page, oh. Carl, I, you know, when you watch that wheel play, this is the difference between league, Little League and Big League. The, the shortstop with the third baseman charge is actually covering third with no one oh. on second. And leaving the big hole there between third and short on any ground ball. But now it's three and oh after that false start on his first pitch. And there for a strike, a straight take from Julian Mora. He got hit by a pitch his first time up. Also hit a home run in the regional. Late on that one. You saw him holding his side after that swing and miss. That's where he got hit by the pitch, first at bat. Not a surprise. His uncle is the head coach of the UCLA football team, his favorite team. Oh! That one misses, and now a little rally going thanks to some wildness from 
Zach McWilliams. Hit batter in a walk. And one of these situations where Julie Hale, the manager of Tennessee, has probably seen this before. There's not much he's going to tell somebody who's as polished as McWilliams is. Unless he senses perhaps heart rate going a little quick. Big spot for Isaiah Bugsy Jensen, the number two hitter. Oh! Ooh, that is a close, close pitch. Yeah, he just missed it, but you, you wonder if that that false start he had that was uh, called a ball that Bora was hitting, you wonder if psychologically it's getting to him a little bit. Because even a 3-1 pitch, a 3-0 pitch was a good pitch. 3-1 pitch was up, and Mora helped him out with a swing on a fastball up. Record for hit batters at the Little League World Series is four. He's, he's been on done, his way. He's been done eight times since 1970, and in fact, the last one to do it was in 2013. Remember the great pitcher from Japan, Kaz Ishida? He did it, and he was as good as anybody we've seen here. But missed two strikes. This is definitely Oregon style. Get a strike in a bunt situation. Go for it for the second One, strike. But 0 for 3. Getting it down. Well, and that's the thing. These kids are all all stars in their leagues. How many times do you think they had the coaches had a bunting? Well, the secrets being told on that dugout. Whispers going on. Sure has everything to do about baseball. <laughs> I'm sure it has nothing to do <laughs> with baseball. <laughs> You're right. That's a call strike on the corner. The inability to get that bunt down is hurting Oregon so far. Puts him in that two-strike hole against a really good pitcher. McWilliams has five strikeouts now. And this is a big out. Good location for McWilliams. That outside corner, nice frame there by Tanner Jones to get the call the bottom of the strike zone. Owen Nelson calls time. He's the right fielder. Imagine as a defense, too, you kind of got to be on your toes. With somebody that strikes out so many, you're not getting a lot of action. You don't want to be caught by surprise out there. Oh, what a wow. catch by the first baseman. Wow, wow Tyler Jones. He was ready to make the play. And yeah, we were told at the start that the, the, the Jones twins were the two best athletes on the team. One catches, one plays first. Look at the quick reactions. And that's what you love. You see the pitcher's reaction there, but that's what you love. Not only did he make a great play, he was looking to get two out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Owen Nelson's mom was, well, was, you know, she respected the play. She just wished it may have happened at a different time and place. What a play, and that kept a likely run off the board. You guys were making fun of the big glove. <laughs> Help there. Uh, how's that working for you now, boys and girls? Another threat. Zach Reynolds, the cleanup hitter. Laid on a good fastball from McWilliams, who seems to bear down when he has to. That's the thing with with McWilliams right now, though, is, you know, yes, he's pitching good, but 41 pitches, and he's not out of the second inning yet, or not out of the third inning. This one is deep to right field. Back goes the right fielder, and he can't come up with it. One run's going to score that Schultz. Here comes the second here. runner, Mora. You're here. He's You're in, here. and Reynolds ends up on third, 2-0 Oregon. That's what I'm talking about. Well, the outfield was already playing deep, respecting the power of Reynolds. And Brock Duffer, who just came in this inning into right field as a defensive to come in for the game. He's deep. He already just misread the ball, and it drops in for a triple. 
And a 2-0 lead for Oregon as Zach Reynolds helps his own cause. The pitcher ends up on third. It's been a story today. We've seen the pitchers, especially at Lomity. Earlier, Ryan Harlos hit a home run for the New York team. He ended up getting the win, and now Reynolds has put his team on top, 2-0. What happens in the process of becoming a little league pitcher hitter to when you get to the big leagues and all of a sudden you can't hit anymore? Why is that? Madison Bumgarner will you go from your best athlete to, to the pitchers. Majority of them are the worst athletes. <laughs> tell you, what, you know, you wonder about just the lights. It's, it's starting to get <clears throat> starting to get, you know, at dusk here in you wonder with the lights if the if he lost it a little bit. Well, I think sometimes even playing deep as an outfielder, you're out of your position. You're used to having to go back on a ball hit that hard. And think about it for Duffer. I mean, he didn't start this game, so you come in and now you haven't had an at bat. You haven't had a chance to really get those nerves out, and you know the ball will find you, Crappy. Yeah, especially when there's men on base. I used to pray every pitch, please don't hit it to me when the outfield. You say at first base. Big run down there at third base for Blaine Causey, 0-2. Oh. He thought that he swung at it. You may want to appeal to first base. He called the umpire called it a ball. And even Causey came back. Don't you have to appeal now to the umpire at first, see if it was a swing? He's saying it was a foul ball tip. He's ball. pointing to the ground like it was a foul tip and it hit the ground. It wasn't One, a catch by the two. catcher. Wow. Now they appeal. Wow. Not called a foul ball. That's a close, close one. In any event, he holds up and we're still playing with a 1 2 count. Nice job behind the plate from Tanner Jones. We've got to make sure nothing gets by him, and it won't. Hangs on, and that is strikeout number five for Zach McWilliams. Now the guy comes to the mound who's got three strikeouts of his own. Zach Reynolds, the big triple, just out of the reach of the right fielder, Brock Duffer. And Bend Oregon breaks through first here. It's 2-0, top three. There you go, a little swirl tonight. All the excitement of the Little League World Series score, stats, highlights, and more found at LLBWS.org or follow along on social media with the hashtag LLWS. Team from Great Lakes who will get in action tomorrow. All right, Jessica Mendoza, first time here. We got a little two-zip game, some good pitching. You've seen all the food varieties and all that. Is there anything that really is just resonating with you? I think just the amount of people that are globally. I mean, just walking around. I was talking to the Panama coaches actually coming in the stadium for this game. And it's just amazing the love for baseball and how it resonates to all ages, mm -hmm. all different countries. And, and you feel that here. We know that. But you feel it when you're in the stadium. That is the unifying factor for all people here, baseball. Easton Dillard will lead off. So we have 8-9 and then back to the top of the order. Uh, Zach Reynolds now pitches from in front. Signs and chairs and sitting on the hill, chilling out, watching a Little League Baseball World Series game. Slow roller fielded smoothly, and Reynolds throws wide. Did he get his foot back in time? It looked like Aaron Plattner may have got his toe back on the bag. That was close. McReynolds did, uh, Rick Reynolds did everything right except throw accurately. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a good thing he rushed the throw because it gave Plattner time to get back and, and get the base. And this is an athletic move for him to be able to keep that foot at least stretched enough as he makes the grab. He actually had his foot on the back when he caught there. it. He just wasn't sure, so he went back. He brought up a great point as we went to the commercial break as Isaiah Page steps in. And he pops up one to the second baseman. Easy play for Evan Ullman. You know, we saw the uh, we saw the batter who had a ball called on him. Thought he swung, ran to first. 
There's another case of a guy who at first base catches it with his foot on the bag but isn't quite sure. Like the, the unbridled honesty. Yes. It's beautiful from the these, uh, these players. Usually you get to the pro level and there's a lot of acting going yeah. on and selling, which is part of the game too, but there's such an innocence for these kids. It's I did swing or, you know, was he at? Let me look to the umpire. I'm not going to tell you. It's a beautiful, beautiful what? part. Now back top of the order. Tennessee's being held in check. Oh. The twins Tanner Jones and Tyler Jones. Zach Reynolds isn't in a big hurry to let them score, is he? He may have just given up up. one. That is a big blast to center field. And Tanner Jones puts his team on the board. That one traveled about 280 or so feet straight away center field. This is when the game gets fun. You get second time through the batting order. Tanner Jones struck out his first at bat. He comes up and look at the confidence, the bat speed. I mean, his first at bat, he was more hesitant. It's his first at bat of the World Series. And here he comes and just ropes, crushes a pitch over the center field fence to get his team on the board. Jeremy oh. Jones there in the dugout along with the rest of the staff. Into the trees it went straight away center field. We'll see if Brother Tyler can match it. Well, they said they were competitive kids. Well, Jamie reported compete on everything and how they put the oh. toothpaste on. How do you compete in that? I, I, None drips? I mean, how about I, the idea that we have toothpaste on the brush? I think yeah. twins are always just a little bit on another level. Sure, it's a good thing to, to be the winner if I brush my teeth faster yeah. than you. <laughs> oh. Tyler's happy he wasn't a right handed hitter for that pitch. So, this is the twin stare down pregame. Don't blink. Push. <laughs> It's something I think anyone who's played youth ball at a young age is always the 3-0 strike. <laughs> it's like automatic if it's near the plate. This one is off the end of the bat and into no man's land out there. So Tanner goes yard and Tyler is on with a single. backed him up with the home run. Tyler just gets enough of this one. Drop it into center field after outfield had moved back a bit. Finds that spot on grass. And now Zach McWilliams, the pitcher who would love to do exactly what Reynolds did, which is get a hit. First pitch in there for a strike. William struck out his first time up. Five foot eight, 135 pounder in eighth grade at the T.W. Hunter School. Zach oh. Williams' favorite player, David Ortiz of the Red Sox. A lot of Red Sox fans down in that Nashville, Goodlitzville area. His best sports moment, he threw a perfect game. Mm. Hopefully, thanks to David Price, they're going to get a bunch of Red Sox gear. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be sporting down in Nashville. A lot of things working in their favor for that, given that Vanderbilt, of course, is not far at all from Goodlitzville, and Tim Corbin is here, and Price is a Vanderbilt dude. There's the head coach at the Vanderbilt University. Clark. 
Sonny Gray, pitcher for the Athletics. So Vandy grad as well. The one two to McWilliams. Good off speed pitch, and McWilliams strikes out. That's his fourth. Not before Tanner Jones getting a piece of the action. Send it out of the park to get his Tennessee team on the board. He crushes a fastball up in the zone, no doubt about it. As his teammates react. They know who the best hitters on this team are, and they're at the top of this lineup. Little League World Series presented, of course, by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. John Kruk and Jess Mendoza join me, Carl Ravitch in the booth, and Jamie Sire down on the field. Oregon's got a 2-1 lead earlier today. How about it? One of the greats of all time. Grand Marshal of the parade last night, Johnny Bench. He's not going to throw out the first pitch. He's going to get behind the plate to catch the first pitch, which is where the greatest offensive catcher of all time is. Most comfortable. Kids from Cali are in the house. Chula Vista and the Kangaroo kids from Australia. Fresh off a nice victory today over Italy, Sydney, Australia. What a start for the boys who get to enjoy Bondi Beach and the rest that Sydney has to offer. Oregon's got a 2 1 lead. We head to the top of the fourth. Opening round games of the 2016 Little League World Series, a tournament that will unfold between now and a week from Sunday when the United States champion will meet the international bracket champion. <laughs> Think that hits him if you don't swing at it? Gorgon just. Turns a little, that ball hits him too. Up to do, isn't it? Three innings, and the lead off hitter each inning has been hit by a pitch. John brought up a good point earlier too, Jess. As fast and as hard and as effective as McWilliams is throwing his pitch count. Got to be careful. Parents, and they believe that that is the number one reason that this team is here in Williamsport now because a lot of these kids go to different schools so really building that chemistry early on was super important. And Jamie I think that's everything I mean yeah they probably saw some awesome baseball but you got to think sleepover staying in the hotel going and getting meals the stories the rides and bonding that's huge and when you remove yourself from your hometown Put yourself in a really awesome place like spring training. That's memories they're going to have for the rest of their lives. Terry was late on that. The mandatory minimum play rule, 13 players on this team from Bend, Oregon. So everybody has to get at least one at bat. 12 or fewer, everybody's got to play six consecutive outs in the field and get at least one at bat. Chase Terry swings and misses at that two and two. So middle innings usually when you see your substitute players 
get their chances to play either in the field or get there at bats. We are in the regionals. They seem to think the third or the fourth inning. Trouble here. Caught out there in the air before it hits the ground. Easton Diller did a good job. And Terry is retired. Yeah, third or fourth third inning. Or fourth, they try to get their subs in to give them an A-B and then move forward, to, you know, depending. If it's, you know, if their top of the order's up in the third, they're, they're not going to hit for those kids. But in the fourth here for the Oregon team, they're six, seven, eight hitters coming up. And basically, you let your bench guys get your A-B and then go back to your starters for the rest of the game. And these have been very productive substitute hitters. Caleb Carpenter you're looking at now had three hits. The cowboy, they call him. He's a rodeo champion. He was talking about how much it helps with his hand-eye coordination because trying to, let me see if I get this right because I'm not a rodeo. <laughs> I understand what he said when he gets the rope around the heels of the steer. That's serious ah. hand-eye coordination. A running steer being able to, to hook him on the heels. You convince me you know what you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, the, you know, the, the rodeo circuit's big in Southern Cal. <laughs> There's that big belty war. Sounded cool. And he won a finalist of the National High School Rodeo Association, the junior division. Ooh, close to him. He was ninth place in the team roping in the junior rodeo nationals. And what I like about this Bend, Oregon team, what their coaches emphasize is let them play as many sports as possible. And that was a big part of them letting him miss part of the season to go be a part of that. Hey, Jess, uh, as somebody from Montana, and I've been to several rodeos, you did a good job. So. Yes. Yeah, I was you really nervous. About. Well, as soon as I heard your voice, I'm like, oh, no, Jamie's going to tell me. <laughs> I know Jamie knows. How hard is what he's what he does, Jamie? I mean, that's hard. I mean, I've never done anything like that. But, uh, no, I mean, that's that takes some skill. Strike out there from McWilliams. Get a lot more than just Little League Baseball when you're at Williamsport. You get rodeo conversation and the belts that go with it. Two to one. Having a really good time at the Little League World Series night one. And what a night it is. Jess Mendoza shows up and things just go beautifully for us. As we look at our Honda game summary, you get Zach Reynolds, one for two with a triple. He played it two. He's pitching a terrific game. So Zach McWilliams, four innings. He has struck out seven. Tennessee got on the board thanks to Tanner Jones' solo shot in the bottom of the third inning. So we got the team from Tennessee. We got the team from Oregon. We saw New York. We saw Warwick, Rhode Island. How about the Midwest, the boys from Iowa? They're getting set and enjoying the night's activity. See the, look, the autograph seekers out there, Jess. It's amazing. Superstars. I mean, that's what this is. Hey, you, you just never know. I guess that's what that is. It's a you never know. But let, let's say that that whoever that is signing an autograph. Yeah. Let's say he goes on to be a Hall of Fame football, basketball, baseball, whatever. Yeah. And you got his autograph when he was 12, 13 years old. You don't think that thing's worth anything? Not only that, the story of where you got it. You're right. Exactly. Yeah. I'm with you. And, and what the signature looks like <laughs> compared to when they get to that level. Carson Rucker hit it hard. He couldn't have played it any better. Julian Moore out there at shortstop. One pitch and one out quickly here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Little League University. Little League U. It provides web-based training for coaches, umpires, league volunteers, and parents. Think about it. An awesome tool helps you. Review practice plans. See some ideas for playing catch in the backyard. Visit and join for free at littleleagueuniversity.org today. And again, continuing to try to grow the game and offer some suggestions and solutions to tricky issues like slow, boring practices. How do you motivate the kids to keep them interested? And I love the one of the car rides home. How do you deal with an upset yep. kid that's crying in the car? And, or the opposite, how does a parent not... <laughs> Go off on the kid the whole way home. Yeah, many lessons for parents is, is probably more important than the ones you, your kids are teaching. Yeah, you think of the summers that these parents have had to go through. 
not only the the, the travel, the expense. It's you know, look that this road is uh, is one you sign up for and you probably never imagine it's going to last as long as it has for the teams that are here. But the challenges you're presented with, I mean, you think about it. The jobs that you have to ask time off for. Yep. Well, many we, employers are really. You remember some of the coaches at the regionals, like, okay, if you go all the way, what's your boss going to say? Cross that bridge when we get there. Yep. So I, Predict it. Uh, oh. You've heard of, you know, parents coming here. They, you know, if you go, you're going to be fired because you can't miss that much work. And, you know, I, again, I, I, I think that's terribly wrong by the boss of that. Whoever they may be, the but parents for the who, most part, call them out. Yes. <laughs> well, it's ha it happened, remember? Uh, the guy from Hawaii that came over and he basically was told you're going to lose your job if you come over. This kid's playing in a Little League World Wait, Series, take. man. Let him go. We don't even get into the siblings and the practices that they're missing or the driver ed lessons or in school. I mean, some SAT of the preps, whatever it may be at your age when you have siblings, older or younger. Everybody sacrifices for the success of the players and their families. I mean, you, you talk about a network. You've got to be able to call your neighbor and say, hey, uh, haven't been home in three weeks. Anything going on over there? And they've got to be able to help out. State of Tennessee has started school already. Telling your teachers, hey. Kids from California started. They have, like, almost year-round school. Not all of them. No, but this Chula Vista team. Oh, is. Cookie, we almost had one. No, you almost did. I'm not making the effort. It was a foul ball. I've done everything I can do. Cruck earlier today, an outstanding web gem. I assume on baseball tonight, which follows our game, it will be the number one gem. Carl, it has to if be. it is, it, my, my entire career will be my only web gem. <laughs> I, think we, I think we know people. Make that happen. Ouch. He got jammed, and that's a slow roller and an out at first base. Yikes, Ethan Jackson. All right, Jess, this is, I don't know if you saw it, but this is what it looked like. I love that he just casually. Oh, it. Yeah, I'd have caught it in my right hand if I didn't have my the pen. pen. Yeah, the pen. The pen. Yeah. But that's part of just, you know. Oh, now you dropped the pen. But now well, you know. Well, because my hand was killing me. <laughs> And I have trouble writing, but other than that. I just love that you didn't try to, like, hide. You didn't nope. ditch your seat. You tried to catch it. Oh. If, but, it was a pitcher, it, if it was a pitcher, they yeah. would have been under the table. And it was an atom ball. Like, there was really nowhere there. to go. It was going wow. to hit him. And it's, and it's, <laughs> it wasn't, and it's quite the target. <laughs> it was coming that quick that we were, he wasn't going to get out of the way of it. <laughs> See the coach coming out to the mound and. First thing he does halfway out, he looks up. How many pitches does he have? Well, he looked up at the uh, scoreboard. Regardless, he's already started the batter, so he could throw as many pitches as he wants. This may be, may be the last he faces. But, boy, you want to win the first game. This is always the strategy that Little League coaches have to deal with, with the pitch count rule and the mandatory days of required rest depending on the threshold you reach. Start to get into a situation when you're only only in a 2-1 game and winning that first game, as we've talked about, is so critical. Well, in the first two games we saw here at the Little League World Series were more clear winner games. Oh. So you were probably able to pull a pitcher. Or feel more comfortable exactly. doing it, yes. No doubt about it. But we saw a game at the regionals, Jess. The team was up 7-0. They pulled their starter after one inning so he could come back the next day. And in the fourth inning, the game was tied 7-7. Wow. Oh. Mr. Karstetter. Go. No swing. I think Zach Reynolds out there is just uh, forgetting whether that was a swing or not. The, the pitch looked like a strike to him. But he's behind 3-0 and and what may be the final batter he faces. Three one to Brock Duffer. Three and two. Thank you, guys. 
Three, two. Duffer, the tallest player on this Goodlitzville team at 5'9". Wild swing at that one, and a good job by Reynolds to come back and pick up his fifth strikeout of the game. We're through four innings, only four hits, a 2-1 lead for Oregon. Comes from a coaching family. We all know his dad, Jim Mora, his famous playoffs. Playoffs? That, of course, is the dad, Jim E. Mora, 15-year NFL coach who loves watching this team play from Bend, Oregon. His uncle, Julian's, and brother, Jim, is, of course, the head coach football team at UCLA. But Steve Moore is the guy doing it now as we take a look at these valuable lessons brought to you by True Value. Hey, World Series, baby. Hey, I love you. Have fun, right? Battle. Move the runners. Let's go. It's time, okay? It's time we put the foot down right here. Hey, go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yes, 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 go, 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 go. You're here, you're here, you're here, you're here. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That's what I'm talking about. You want to play for Steve Mora and, of course, coach and dad as well. We've got a lot of braces issues. Look out. He's working on Julian's braces. He's tweaking the bar in there. Yep, we're good. All right. You get a thumbs up from Julian. We are good to go. And some braces tips from dad, too. Not just baseball going on. Once a parent, yep. always a parent. And he's done a terrific job getting this team Hi from all. Oregon, Bend, Oregon, the middle of the state, here to the Williamsport. Strike one to Joe Schutz, who leads things off. He's the number nine hitter for Oregon. Then back to the top in the braces of Julian Mora. Ooh, the old smooch emoji. Are you an emoji person, Jess? Yes. You can have a whole conversation, so just emojis. No words. And then the bit emojis. That's like a whole oh, other. Next level. Yes. <laughs> Johnny, you a, a bit emoji guy? No. <laughs> you can't even just answer. rolling your eyes. What does that mean? <laughs> He's refusing to talk to us about emojis. Slow roll at a second base. So oh, off the glove of Easton Dillard. Looked like perhaps he was going to try to make the throw before he had the ball. It's that internal clock. Sometimes you rush when you don't have to. See how quick he was trying to be. See how his feet were moving toward first base to make the throw before the ball got to his glove. Consequently, the glove raise up, it hits the bottom of the glove, and we have a leadoff base runner for Oregon. And back to the top of the order. Mora, this is another chance. Dillard tags, throws, there you go. That's how to make up for it. A double play. And how about you don't hang your head? I mean, you could tell he was frustrated after the air. He kind of yelled at himself, threw the ball back to the pitcher. He gets a chance to redeem himself. What does he do? He's got great awareness of exactly where the runner is, gets rid of it for the double play. How big important. is that too, Carl? Important, two, I was going to say. Two outs say. with one pitch. Yep, important for a lot of different reasons. As I say, a Bugsy Jensen, Bugsy oh. looks at a first pitch ball. How about the leadoff hitters for Oregon? First inning, hit batter. Second inning, hit batter. Third inning, hit batter. Fourth inning, a flyout. Fifth inning, E4. So four guys reach without the benefit of a hit. I, mean, I think it just tells you how good McWilliams is pitching. You know, usually leadoff hitter gets on, no outs. You're looking at a multiple run inning, or at least a one run inning. Yeah. And I held him except for that one inning. Held him, held him down. He's been great. His defense behind him has been really solid. Got to find out why they call his call him Bugsy. Jamie sneak into the dugout. That shows you how filthy McWilliams is. Hey, you see, you know, a lot of kids, little league, fastball, curveball. 
Looks like McWilliams has fastball slider. Oh. Called the ball again. It's called the ball. Runner runs to first anyway on a ball three. A hard time between the communication <laughs> well, umpire. Well, you know what's funny about this play? You know, the catcher probably could have thrown and got him out, but since they didn't, there, Tennessee's not even going to ask for appeal. What if they appeal and the umpire says, yeah, he swung, but now he's safe on first. The catcher's like, shoot, we'll put him back up here to hit with two strikes. There's a strikeout, so McWilliams twice has seen runners go to first, come back, and he has struck him out. We're looking at eight strikeouts, and the benefit of a double play. Eastern Dillard picks it, tags, and fires for the out. Good game, 2-1, bottom five, coming up. World Series is presented by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes Cereal. They're great! Welcome back. You see Volunteer Stadium right upper part of your screen. Lomity Stadium full tonight and will be for the next week and a half. The United States and the international brackets. Eight teams in each as the Little League World Series presented by Kellogg's Frosted Flakes will continue Tomorrow, Friday, 2 Eastern Time, Canada, Japan, Chula Vista, and Johnston, Iowa will meet in the U.S. game. And then we wrap it up Friday night, South Korea, Curacao, Bowling Green, Kentucky, and San Antonio, Texas. 16 teams out of thousands that play worldwide here enjoying the fruits of their long summer of baseball labor, if you will, with the travels and the tournaments and the team building and bonding, and they have made it here to Williamsport. Good game tonight. Oregon leading Tennessee 2-1. to one. Pitchers duel extraordinaire. Zach Reynolds and Zach McWilliams. John Henry Knotts. Pinch hitter rolls one to first for the out. Not a lot of hard hit balls tonight at all off of Reynolds. We haven't seen a lot of pulled balls, a lot of Jam shots, weak ground balls. That last one was hit hard, but late. And even the triple, big scoring triple for Oregon was on a ball that was, was late. You see the pitching comparison between the two Zacks. Good numbers. Of course, McWilliams up to those 73 pitches compared to Reynolds 61. John Luke Simmons, pinch hits, good hitter, two for five at the regionals. Oh! Looks like a hitter, too, as he holds on that one, called low for a ball. One that Tanner Jones hit was hit pretty well. That was about it, though, for the most yeah. part. Yeah, there's four and hits. Both, but, but that's why the score's two to one. Both pitchers have been really, really good. 5'7", 138-pounder. Oh! You know, the dove, the triple that scored the two runs was a was a misplayed ball in the outfield. Yeah. It, if that ball's caught, it's a one nothing game. That one's low, John Luke Simmons, mom Tina, and dad Rick. Part of the crowd here from Goodlessville, Tennessee, which is a short ride from Nashville, Tennessee, and one of the reasons the Vanderbilt head baseball coach Tim Corbin is here. This guy loves being in the outdoors. He fishes mostly for bass, likes to hunt deer, duck, and dove, and ties flies for fly fishing. He wants to work as a wildlife management officer one day as an adult. Finds time to sneak in a little baseball. Yeah. And he's an ACDC fan now because his dad introduced him to okay. the Rockers. <laughs> Go, Dad. Wouldn't think he'd have found yes. that on his own. Swings and misses at that, and he's a little frustrated. But for Zach Reynolds, that's strikeout number six, so he's not alone. Sunday night baseball matchup has the Giants and the Mets. Jess, where's that game? That's in San Francisco. We got Samarja against Syndergaard going head to head. And both Thor. these teams struggling a bit now, but that NL wildcard race is a battle. We'll have baseball tonight from right here in Williamsport. Adnan Dallas and Tim Kirkshin will stream live on Watch ESPN on the ESPN app. We got a Little League World Series game as well at 8 o'clock Eastern Time on Sunday.
So head to head with the big boys of Major League Baseball. Hey, how, how bad a second half of the Giants been in, been on their worst record Ugh. in baseball. I, I'm not worried about them. Bruce Bochy. Oh. Team's too good. I wouldn't worry about if it was like a week of 0 for <laughs> you know 0 and 6. This has been like a month where they have been just you know, awful. They, they had a similar run though heading into the All Star break in 14, almost the same record and. Managed to do pretty decent, the I think, how they well. finished. R.J. Moore swings and misses. This odd part for me is that for a while there this season, they had what looked like the most balanced offense yeah. in the National League. Yeah. And I, I mean, they all hit. Now none of them are hitting. I think they're still balanced. It's just Pence has just come back and hasn't been Hunter Pence. Joe Panic, But these guys can rake, and they will. Oh. I believe it. Well, that's good to hear. I'm sure Giant fans are happy to hear that. Dodger fans, eh, maybe not so much, but... That's been the bigger surprise, how solid that offense has been. Baseball tonight will follow us. You'll get all the Major League conversation. We focused on the Little Leaguers here tonight. As R.J. Moore looks at one that's in there for a strike as he got backed out. Zach Reynolds has retired seven in a row. And Oregon's got a one-run lead. And they are three outs away from winning their first game here in Williamsport. That's the old knee buckler, and it bends in for a strike. To baseball fields, as aerial coverage is brought to you by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get Direct TV. If you look kind of closely in between the two fields, there's a stage down there occupied by two giants when it comes to broadcasting and talking baseball and sports. Guy in the gray shirt is Adnan Burke. And the guy in the blue shirt is Tim Kirk. And there they are. Uh, not laughing at anything we're saying. <laughs> they are uh, having their own dialogue. I'm sure it's something about a movie. Probably. <laughs> or food. I don't think Imagine there's. Imagine that. Tim telling think, a story. I don't think there's anything more annoying than to Go read guys. and hear Adnan. Go guys talk about movies. <laughs> Baseball tonight is presented by Hines. It comes up next. Adnan all over uh, Pete the Dragon today was his review. He's, he's a movie guy. Versatile. College football, movies, all the things in between. Tonight he's focused on Little League Baseball and what a game. Oregon 2, Tennessee 1, last inning. Zach McWilliams has thrown 73 pitches, so he's got 12 left in his Arsenal before he's got to come out of the game, so he really needs an efficient inning. Got to throw strikes and get strikes called and have balls put in play for outs. It's rare you get uh, two pitchers to potentially complete games, but we may have that tonight. Well, and they've been really, what's impressed me, and again, this is my first Little League game being able to be a part of it, but I've been so impressed by both pitchers tonight being able to throw to both sides of the plate. And that's something you don't see at all levels, let alone this level, and the confidence. I mean, Mick Williams, you've talked about it, looking over the glove and just locating. Yeah, this is something he doesn't need now. Yeah, every every <laughs> foul ball is a good foul yeah. ball for Bend, Oregon. And just to make you aware, I wasn't aware of this, that if there happens to be an intentional walk, those four pitches count as the pitch count. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ooh, needed that one, Bowen Wilson. Even the illegal pitch that he didn't throw, so he just stopped his windup. They counted that as a pitch, yep. and all he did was just stop. That helps. One down, top of the six is Bowen Nelson is retired. Pretty decent size field, two thirds the conventional size, 46 feet away, the mound 60 feet, the bases 225 feet around the outfield. And it may come down to just a couple of inches as far as the ball hit to right field and the glove of Duffer, who was unable to come up with it and allowed the two runs to score. And that's really the difference in the game. I mean, Bend, Oregon has one hit. Gotta love that, don't you? 
Bowen Nelson grounds out to start the inning, and he runs down to the bullpen to warm up. <laughs> and they can't get the gate open. There they go. <laughs> Reynolds is in a little bit better shape. He is throwing 70 of a possible 85. And he'll come to the mound in the bottom of the six. But he's at the plate now. Reached on a walk and ended up at third base. That's a hit. And Van Oregon's second hit of the game is Reynolds. Sends one in the left field through the shortstop and third base hole. And Reynolds has the two hits for this Oregon team. Two hits in the game. He's got them both. Yeah, a triple. That's right. Yeah. Triple ended and up on third base. Hit a walk, and he's but knocked he's a in both runs. And well, if he continues pitching like he's pitching, he's going to have a complete game. Pretty good day. I think so. I think he'll get the game ball. Clock radio. And some sprinkles on his ice cream. Yeah, there, there Carl. you go. Maybe some fried dough. <laughs> so I, I'll tell you that we talked about this in the regional. In Montreal, I got player of the game after one of the games. They gave me, for being player of the game, a chainsaw. <laughs> How was I getting that through customs? <laughs> and to give it to all people. <laughs> well, I could have used it. I would have been scared to see you with a chainsaw. <laughs> now, if you're a Bend, Oregon player, Jess, as yeah. somebody who lives out there, a chainsaw would be appropriate, right? I mean, that would be a good gift. Not think? for a 12-year-old, but I mean, you think? if you're a you, major league do, player. A <laughs> major league, player. okay. I'm picturing the 11-year-old. Not the 11-year-old. You, you don't think there's any trees in West Virginia? <laughs> it's just hard to move the chainsaw around. Declan Corrigan has gone on as a special pinch runner. He thought about trying to get into scoring position. And given the difficulties of getting three and a half ounces of uh, liquid through, chainsaw you're not getting a chainsaw through security at the airport. Tough to hide. Oh. Fouled at the plate from Causey. The pitch count to 82. If he can get it out here, he will be able to face potentially the last batter of the sixth and go over that 85 pitch count. These are big pitches. And he got a good one there. So Causey is down and a chance to get the third out of the sixth inning. Carl, you're exactly right. How rare is this going to be? We might see two Number complete six, games. Sam Renner. Zach Reynolds was pinch run for, so a runner on first is Corrigan. Sam Renner. Strike you, one. You look at this game, you know, Oregon, two runs, two hits, no errors. Tennessee, one run, three hits, one error, but that one error, the following pitch was turned into a double play. Yeah. Renner on the ground is short. That'll do it. So McWilliams did his job. He gave up two hits. Tennessee's going to come to the plate. Bottom of the sixth, top of the order. See what unfolds next. What a game and what a night. Oregon 2, Tennessee 1, bottom six. Or as Tim Kirkshin on baseball tonight might say, what a thing. We got ourselves an unbelievable Little League baseball game with baseball tonight standing by and on deck. And now you got the top of the order against the guy that has been locked down on the mound. You're looking at Tanner Jones. All he did was that. His last time up, he went yard. Straight away center field. And if you're going to throw a complete game and win a World Series game, it's not going to be easy. And the sixth inning is a challenge for Zach Reynolds. He'll face Tanner and twin brother Tyler. They have two of the three hits tonight for Goodlettsville. First pitch outside and it misses. And you don't think he doesn't remember what happened yeah. the last time he faced him. And, you know, you don't want to walk the leadoff hitter, but hey, you don't want to give in either and have to throw something out, out over the plate that he can get a piece of. Oh. Down 2-0, oh, the two best hitters on the Goodlettsville, Tennessee team, Tanner Jones. 5 for 11 with two homers at the regional. His brother 5 for 12. 
And of course, his dad, Jeremy, is part of this coaching staff. Oof. Some of the boys just have swings that, that yeah. feel like when they make contact, the ball goes a long way. And Tanner was looking away. You could tell he just jumped on that, missed it foul. After two pitches, not even close. That one probably looked like a bit of a cookie. Five foot eight, 128 pounds, Tanner Jones. Oh. He's got him right where he wants him at three and one. That's a first time I've seen Reynolds kind of like try to crossfire a left-handed hitter. See him do it to a couple righties to get a strike three, but not to a lefty. Challenged him, that one got off the end of the bat and it's gonna land short of the center fielder. You understand why Caleb Carpenter was so deep and off the bat. He could mistake it for a ball that was hit well, but it was off the end of the bat. Uh, you remember what he did his last at bat, and so you assume, okay, it's coming my way. He might have hit another one, and you're playing deep anyway because you don't want no doubles defense. Keep the runner at first base and just a, just a not a great jump by the center fielder. And now we got action on the Tennessee side. Tyler Jones, twin brother, bats now. Oh. Ball one. They need one to tie, two to win here in the bottom of the sixth. Ripped into right. Keep an eye on Tanner Jones. He hits second. He goes to third. Here's the long Damn. throw. To second base goes Tyler. So the Jones twins deliver here in the bottom of the sixth. Well, we mentioned at the start of the game, Carl, these guys were the table setters. And Tanner had no hesitations going to third base. He was going all the way. But you look here, the fundamentals Damn. missed the cutoff, man. Allows Tyler now to be the winning run to get to second base. And so now you have first and second, no outs. Runners are at second and third. And that's going to bring up Zach McWilliams with first base open. The two Jones brothers are four for six tonight. The rest of the team, one for 14. Look like Tanner Jones over there at third base. Got a little contact issue with his contact lens. Man's voice you just heard there was Joey Hale. He's the third base coach and the manager for Tennessee. He's talking to McWilliams right now. Just crowd the play, stand all over it, get ahead and account, and we'll rip. All we gotta do is make contacts. Go. Entelkoffer is the catcher. And perhaps one of the very rare Little League World Series intentional walks coming up, which is going to tack on four pitches to the pitch count of Reynolds and get him to 81. And this is a keep your eye on also oh. third base. You just don't see it very often. It makes some sense, obviously, with first base open. Yeah, this is part of the strategy of Little League. Do you, do you want your pitcher to throw four pitches intentionally walking someone to oh. get to 81, knowing that yeah, Unless he gets a triple play in the next four pitches, you're going to have to bring in someone else to pitch to pitch, pitch to your 5-6 hitter. Well, this is smart, too. McWilliams is now trying to get the pitch count up. So he swings at it. And instead of just four on the pitch count, the pitch count will go to eight if he continues to swing, or seven. Now they're pitching to him. Some gamesmanship wow. here at the Little League World <laughs> Series. Well, that's one of those, you know, you, if they want to walk you, let them walk you type of deals. I know they wanted to hey, get the pitch count the up. Hit. Be ready. But Pass ball, get that's there. Uh, pretty bold on the part of the team from Tennessee. Infield, all in, 2-2. Two -two. Oh. High, full count. 
Tanner Jones single. He's moved to third base on his brother Tyler Jones single. He advanced to second on the throw. First base. Tags. And a great job over there by Isaiah Jensen. Bugsy did a job. He looked the runner back and made sure he got the out at first. Big out. Carl, oh, that's the thing. You you look at Bugsy Jensen right here. Yeah, he catches the ball. He looks he looks Tanner Jones back not once but twice, and then he goes and steps away. He knew he had time because the ball was sharply hit. 83 pitches, so this could very well be the last batter, barring a one pitch out that Reynolds is going to be able to throw to tonight. Rucker tonight has made two outs, but he's put the bat on the ball twice. Oh! In the dirt, it stays right at home plate. A huge break for Oregon. Inel Coffer didn't know where it went. And, and a good read by Tanner Jones at third base, even though it took a little bit of time Bring to cover to to pick up the ball. This will be the final batter that Zach Reynolds will face tonight. Grounder to short comes home. We got a run down. Everybody's safe and the bases are loaded. Heads up base running by Tanner Jones. He drew the throw and was able to get back to third safely. And Carl, you can tell this is something that was communicated, something that they've worked on. Tanner Jones knew to create the throw, to be able to basically deke the fielder, the throw home. It's a win-win if they make an error, th overthrow it. He scores. If they don't, they get the runner on first. Still only one out. And 85 pitches have been thrown by Zach Reynolds. And the bases are going to be loaded. Whoever the relief pitcher is, is, is going to have to come into a situation like this. It looks like it's going to be Bowen Nelson from right field. Both sections of fans have stood up to applaud the effort from Zach Reynolds, the starting pitcher. Certainly appreciate his effort on the mound. It's outstanding. Five and one third innings. He leaves with the bases loaded. He did not walk anybody and he struck out seven. So now it's up to Bowen Nelson, Little League World Series, two to one Oregon with the loaded bases when we come back. Doza and Jamie Sire, I'm Carl Ravich. Hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. Little League World Series, Oregon's got a 2-1 lead. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning, one out. The starting pitcher has been taken out of the game because he's reached his pitch threshold. And now, Bowen Nelson, the 94-pound, 5-foot, 2-inch, 12-year-old, has to deal with Ethan Jackson. Ethan hit two home runs at the regional. And he fouls the first pitch off. Well, the adjustment for... Ethan Jackson's going to be velocity. Zach Reynolds had really good fastball, and Bowen Nelson is more of a finesse pitcher. Tanner Jones at third, Tyler Jones at second. And, and you see Bowen Nelson two strikes. You see it, two two pitches, two swings, both of them off the end of the bat. Because he needs to sit back a little bit longer. But yes, as a hitter, this is when you have to tell yourself, you got to try to get jammed. That way you know you're staying back on someone who doesn't throw with great velocity. Oh! A little high, you wonder how his mom, Senna, is dealing with it. She's been known to be the loudest of all fans in the stands. He 
Ethan Jackson admires Jose Bautista. Oh. Pitched right to the glove, but Ethan Jackson wasn't fishing. Swings and misses. What a strikeout for Bowen Nelson, and now one out away. And even though he doesn't blow it by hitters with his velocity, I think he took even a little bit more off of this one. As you see the bat of Ethan Jackson. Center cut up a little bit high, but a little bit slower to even, even the last three pitches he saw. As he swings right through it. Look at the look on <laughs> Bowen's face. Whee! I love it. Poor kid comes in with the bases loaded to face a guy that hit two homers in the regional and he strikes him out. No problema. The best is I bet Bowen Nelson had no idea. No chance. That Ethan Jackson was the guy. No chance. So we got him loaded. It all started with Tanner Jones single. His brother twin followed him. He's the winning run. Tyler Jones at second. And now it comes down to Robert Carroll, the 12-year-old, 5'7", 107-pounder. Fouls one off. Bowen Nelson continues to throw strikes. He just came in from right field. Robert Carroll is in his first year with the team. Sneaking a peep at the catcher, too. Right field and deep. This one is going to the wall. Oh, the glove of the right fielder. And Goodlettsville, Tennessee is going to win with a walk-off double by the first-year player, Robert Carroll. Outstanding effort by Caleb Carpenter in right field. It just went off the top of his glove. A two RBI double for Robert Carroll and Goodlettsville, Tennessee rallies with two runs in the bottom of the sixth to win this one three to two. Carl, I'll tell you, this was a well-played Little League baseball game. Great pitching, great defense, and one big clutch hit. What a ball game. What pitching by both Zach Reynolds and Zach McWilliams. And we're up here applauding for both of the teams. What a super, super game. You're looking at eight hits and five runs. How about Robert Carroll doing a perfect job of staying back, staying back into his legs on a pitch that was a little bit slower. And Carl, you mentioned it. Look at the effort of Caleb Carpenter. He got a perfect jump. Perfect to go back on that just off the tip of his glove in Tennessee. Watch the catch for Caleb Carpenter, the miscatch right mm. off the tip. You couldn't ask for a better jump, a better reach from the right fielder, but Tennessee and the reaction of mom, of Robert Carroll, <laughs> Tennessee think, gets the win. I think that with, with one out, when Ethan Jackson was up, they had the outfielders come in. Mm -hmm. They didn't move him back. And that's why he had such a long run to try to get that ball. With two outs, you, know, you play normal depth with two outs, and they didn't come get the ball, or they didn't, they didn't move him back. It ends up going over his head. They have that sign rally for Jimmy. Jimmy Etzel was Jimmy. a coach on this team a couple of years ago, and he coached a lot of the players when they were 10 years old. He died in May from cancer, and he very likely would have been in the dugout with this team had he survived. So they win one and rally for Jimmy. No doubt, a great rally and a great game. Again, both teams played outstanding, but it's Goodlettsville, Tennessee, the winner tonight. They'll get Endwell, New York on Sunday. Rhode Island will take on Bend, Oregon, and 
One of those two teams will see their Little League World Series come to a conclusion with regards to championship dreams, but they will play a third consolation game against a team from the international side. We begin tomorrow at 2 Eastern time with Canada and Japan. Our first look at the team from California and Iowa, Bowling Green, Kentucky, and San Antonio, Texas, Friday at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Pretty good uh, game one, Jess? You enjoy it? Kidding me, a one-run game the entire time? <laughs> Come back? Can ask for better. We hooked another one, John. Yep. We hooked another one. Mendoza in on Little League World Series. And so is Carroll, Robert Carroll, his family, and the rest of Tennessee tonight and Goodlettsville celebrate a walk-off win. Much more of the Little League World Series and the Major Leaguers coming up now as we send it to baseball tonight. Adnan and Tim. Guys. All right, Ravi, thank you very much. Oregon and Tennessee.